All right, guys, by request, I have finally taken it upon myself to track down a Busey, Busey, however you want to pronounce this, Bussy um, knife. And today we're going to be going over what they call the SY KCO um, or Psycho Sicko, whatever you might think it is. I'll actually explain what that abbreviation means, but this is essentially a Bussy or Busey knife. Um, I think for the video, we're gonna call it a Busey knife. And we're gonna be talking about what I think of it so far and the limited use, um, kind of just going over this knife because there's not a whole lot of videos really on Busey knives out there and so this company kind of is like steeped in mystery and i've put a little bit of use on this guy but arguably just literally getting it less than 24 hours ago um you know i, I can't necessarily just take everything out into the wilderness and pound on it real fast so anyways this is going to be a bit more of an overview but i thought it'd be interesting to talk about this knife and talk about why specifically i chose this knife of all their knives in the lineup so like i said first off let's go over what this knife actually is so unfortunately with a lot of abuses like custom shop there really aren't a whole lot of names they have things like the team gemini and they have a handful of other kind of like named knives but this one in particular is one of their scrapyard cust or scrapyard knife company sorry there we go um or sykco um knives and so for those who are uninitiated to Busey as a whole it's Busey knife group and as a part of Busey knife group they have Busey custom Busey combat knives they have scrapyard um, knife company they have swamp rat knife company and so there's four overall companies that are still made in the same factory still made with largely the same materials still made with the same type of you know attention to detail so if you have a scrapyard <laughs> if you have a scrapyard knife if you have a um if you have a swamp rat knife, if you have a Busey, you know, combat knife, they're all made in the same factory by the same people. It's just usually the different companies or different brands have different priorities. So scrapyard uh, knives tends to be a little bit more hunting slash, um, like outdoor related. So essentially what that means is like Busey knives or combat knives are knives you can use outdoors for survival but they're also primarily designed to be like stabby kinds of knives they're designed to be combat knives um, so scrapyard is designed to be more of your hunting um, swamp rat is designed to be more of your kind of like meat processing game processing like actual like cooking kind of knives if you will like they're not they're far from like cooking more like camp cooking knives but your swamp rat are designed to be like that and because of the name swamp rat those are going to be your more stainless knives so currently swamp rat knives is making like um knives out of magna cut steel so it's one of the i think the most corrosion resistant steel Busey uses so it's designed to be more of a kind of like um cooking slash you know wet environment type ni ni yeah, knives and then of course you have like Busey Customs which is just your custom kind of high-end like multi-thousand dollar Buseys and then of course your Busey Combat Knives that are what we all know properly as Busey Knives. So that's a quick little breakdown on the four companies and kind of what they mean. Obviously there are different um things i'm not going to cover here about each brand but anyways so for those wondering about like you know what is a scrapyard knife company knife you know like is it a real Busey? it is certainly a real Busey. this one literally was shipped from them i ordered from Busey's website so it is absolutely a real one but yeah so it's a little bit as you can see more of a hunting styled knife not just with this camo which is a really awesome triple um cerakote so with this particular camo this is an in-house made camo by Busey, and so you have that of course blaze orange on the blade and then of course accented by gunmetal gray and black and so i think this one was really good of course they have other camo patterns and they have other you know things that they can do i just happen to think that this one was really eye-catching for me i liked it and so i just picked it up so the the whole camo pattern is not necessarily indicative like they make this very knife that you see here and other camo patterns and stuff like that i just liked this one and thought it was cool and of course all of these are one-offs so if you get any of these camo patterns like this um, you may get one that has you know the same orange black and gunmetal gray but they're all going to be you know different like hand done so i think it's really cool to see that nice little touch now as to 
of this particular knife, like I said, this is under the brand of Scrapyard Knives, and this one is what they call their 1021. So that's as much of a brand name as it is. And essentially with what I would call the 10 series, they are rubberized, fully rubberized handled knives. So super comfy, of course, no exposed tang, but still near full tang blade here. So plenty of strength there. And so this is a fully rubberized handle. And then the 10 series is just a bunch of different blade shapes. So the 1021 is the trailing point and they do have multiple trailing point like 1021s on the website. And then they have like the 1020, the 1022, and all of them are just different blade or yeah, blade shapes. So you have like drop points, spear points, trailing points, you have different types and styles of blade shapes. Now for this one in particular, like I said, I just thought that this particular, um, like this is a semi-custom knife, so it is made on a 1021 kind of styling, but this does have a cu custom um, finish to it. So this is just the one that I thought looked the coolest and the most appealing to me. And of course is applicable to wilderness use. There are some blade shapes that I would say would be more applicable to bushcrafting and survival, but the trailing point is still pretty darn cool and pretty darn useful. So that's the 10 series. This is the 1021 and overall, these knives are made out of SR101. Now, Busey, one of the most tricky things about them is their knife steels. And like I said, this is SR101. And what SR101 is, is essentially a proprietary in-house heat treated version of 52100. Now, of course, with Busey being their hype and their allure, Busey's always gonna say that they are the best with any steel, but essentially it is 52100 ball bearing steel that has been custom heat treated by Busey to you know, have better edge retention, better wear resistance, you know, all the things. And is that necessarily true? Well, it's hard to exactly say, but it is a really good heat treat. To be fair, Busey does a very good job with their heat treats, but I don't know if it's necessarily you know, a righteous way of re categorizing the whole steel and making um, SR101. Now there may be also some slight um, composition differences with this particular steel. It might be slightly different from 52100. Um, once again, with SR101, it's not a widely published or widely used steel. It's an in-house Busey steel. So not a ton is known about this particular steel. And so, um, you know, it is what it is. So take that for what it's worth. Now, one of the best things, and as the title of this video is, a legendary knife for a legendary price, or something like that. These things are pretty cool. The Scrapyard Knife Company and the Swamp Rat Knife Company are two of Busey's brands that I say budget and I use budget in the loosest sense of that term because these are still over $150 when all is said and done. But these are, unlike the Team Gemini, unlike some of the more you know well-known Buseys, these Busey knives can be had for very, very reasonable prices. So this one in particular is a around $130 to $140 knife. Now, once again, factor in shipping. And one thing I dislike about Busey's process is when they sell knives, any of their knives on their website, they sell you the knife. Like just this knife is what you're getting. If you want a sheath, you have to pay extra money for that. And so it's a little bit tricky. This thing all in all ended up turning out being, I want to say about $160. So it was about 140 just for the knife and then like $20 for the sheath. And so don't get me wrong, their sheaths are just fine. It's just kind of frustrating as a modern knife consumer that you know you buy a knife for this much money and then you have to spend this much money on a sheath to go with that knife. So it's kind of frustrating in my opinion that they don't just bundle the price. Like I would rather just see the whole price. Like I don't mind spending the $160, but I would rather just see the $160 already as opposed to the, oh, you're getting a $130 or $140 knife, but you have to spend another $20 if you want the sheath. And so that kind of thing for me, like that whole upselling kind of thing really, really nauseates me. But anyways, as far as it goes, um, these are still very much budget uh, Buseys. So like I said, budget being a very loose term here because there are knives, many knives much cheaper than this, but for a Busey, these are actually like attainably priced. And so what do I think of this guy so far? There is also, um, 
So overall, I'm pretty impressed with it so far. As far as this knife goes, I didn't just choose this knife because it was a more affordably priced Busey. I wanted to buy this knife because of the trend for fixed blades that I'm going. And I'm gonna make more videos specifically talking about this, but for wilderness use and applications for fixed blades, I'm really starting to get into more fully rubberized handles. Um, these are incredibly comfortable in the long winter months that we have in Alaska. They're also incredibly grippy and in, once again, all types of seasons and weather, but also in all types of conditions. So whether your hand is wet, bloody, um, dry, you know, gloved, it doesn't matter. The rubber is super, super grippy. So I'm really becoming a fan of fully rubberized knives, not just because, or fully rubberized handles, not just because they, um, offer you know like good temperature control and they do they're very comfortable in cold or severe cold weathers but they're also very very tacky and this is a really good example of that as well so when i was choosing this knife i really wanted to choose a knife that um, had a fully rubberized handle because that is essentially the trend of knives that I'm looking to add more into my collection. And this one really hits that quite well. So overall, um, that is kind of my initial impressions on the W, on the 10 series. Now, like I said, this is the 1021. And overall, I think it's a pretty darn cool knife. It definitely gets the job done. Now, like I said, if you do get an SC sheath, or not SC, Busey sheath, it's basically going to look like this. And you can get it in either this kind of natural color like I chose, or you can get it in black. I chose the natural color because I just like the natural leather. I think it looks good. And once again, just like everything Busey does, it is high quality. And once again, I don't necessarily have a problem paying $20 for a sheath. It's just, I wish that they would be upfront with the cost of, you know, like here's the whole package as opposed to, you know, you can get a knife for 130, but it's an extra 25 for a sheath or something along those lines. That to me feels a little bit disingenuous, but aside from that, the knife itself is actually pretty good. Definitely look forward to testing it more and playing with it a bit more. As it stands now, it is super comfortable. I really do dig the ergonomics. I didn't fully mention that, but there's plenty of sprawling space on the handle and the handle is well, not just rounded, of course, as you'd expect with a rubberized handle, but it has good, honestly solid um, palm swell here that feels very natural to the hand and feels very comfortable in the hand. This is largely some of the things that I've really talked about why I dislike companies like Gerber, but it's things like when you handle a you know $150 Busey versus $100 or $120 Gerber that you realize why this type of knife is so much better even for the little bit extra cost. So anyways guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video. I would definitely recommend going to Busey's website and checking these guys out. I think that's the only place you can actually get the 10 series. Um, you have to like get these legitimately made by Busey from their shop. And so these guys are pretty cool. Um, and once again, if you are looking at really getting into, you know, a Busey, I would highly recommend checking out the Scrapyard knives because the Scrapyard knives offer, you know, honestly like really functional, really well-made knives. Once again, these are still made by Busey, but the prices are oftentimes lower. And so you're getting more of an attainable uh, knife. Anyways, guys, that is my uh, overview and look at a legendary knife for a legendary price.